Graham Grant. MacGuffin Man. I got an office. Ooh. Captain America, Civil War. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Captain America Civil War brings back the Russo brothers who directed Captain America The Winter Soldier. The first time I saw The Winter Soldier, when the movie started, I was like, what the fuck? This is really good. And it gave the Russo brothers a jump start on their Marvel career. From that movie, they were assigned to do Captain America Civil War, and they're going to do the next two Avengers movies, which is pretty fucking awesome because they do a great, great job. They're so good. When I heard they were going to do a Captain America Civil War movie, I was a little skeptical because the comic books, which I'm a pretty big fan of, took a story and stretched it over a year long with tons and tons and tons of characters. I knew they'd have to consolidate the material and bring it down into a two and a half hour movie, but I didn't know that they would do such a good fucking job with it. The story is over the last few years, the Avengers with saving the world and such, they have a ton of collateral damage and a lot of innocent people have been killed in all these events. So the government creates the Sokovia Accords, otherwise known as the Superhero Registration Act. And Iron Man jumps on board right away, and he come, he kind of becomes the spokesperson for this act to have superheroes sign it. So the government has, I guess you could say, control over where the Avengers go, when they go, and save the world. Basically, the Avengers and superheroes and such have to be have, have approval to go and save the world. And they can't just jump on whatever they want to do when they want to do it. Captain America says, Fuck that. I trust you guys before. You guys screwed me over. Go watch The Winter Soldier if you haven't seen it because it's so good. It's what it's all about and it's awesome. And that creates a clash between Iron Man and Captain America. And anyone that agrees with it joins Iron Man. Anyone that disagrees joins Captain America. Therefore, you have your Civil War. Now, the Rooster Brothers, they took a comic book series which spanned over hundreds of comics and they condensed it down into an amazing, amazing script. And in my opinion, it's flawless. It's one of the best, if not the best comic book movie I've ever seen. And when I say that, I do include The Dark Knight. Yeah, I fucking said it. And when I say that, it's because in The Dark Knight, there are flaws and I feel like that's, that's probably because of Heath Ledger dying and they, I feel like they couldn't have wrapped up the Joker story well enough. They just kind of literally left him hanging. Yeah. Now with Captain America Civil War, you understand every single character's motivation. In the comics, Captain America was kind of fleshed out as the good guy and Iron Man was fleshed out as the bad guy. And it was because of the actions that each of them took. In this movie, it's kind of hard because things that happen makes you completely agree with both of them. And I love that because the whole time they're fighting, you're just like, please stop fighting. Please stop fighting. You both have good causes. And the ongoing ideologies between both of them is psychologically stressful. <laughs> And before the conflict builds up to them actually fighting, they have conversations. There are, there's a lot of story and plot and it's fan fucking tastic. God, I love this movie. With this conflict, we, you have, there's a ton of characters, so I don't want to get into it too much. I'll try to do a quick rundown of them. Captain America. Like I said, Cap has trusted the government before and they kind of screwed him over. So he always goes with how he feels in his heart and some things happen to him that really makes him stick to his values and that's why I love Captain America because he always sticks to his values and goes for what he believes is right. Iron Man. Ever since the first Avengers movie, Iron Man's kind of been dealing with guilt for things that went down and things that happened. I'm not going to spoil anything, but um, something happens at the beginning of this movie that really makes Iron Man consider what the government's proposing and he, that's what gets him on board with it. And he also sticks to his guns. And we get to see a lot more action than we've gotten to see in the last, the last couple times we've seen Iron Man, which is fantastic. And we get to see cool gadgets and Tony Stark using his brilliant mind with his tech and with manipulating certain people if he needs to. 
We've got Black Widow and the Falcon. Uh, Scarlett Johansson doing a fantastic job as Black Widow, as always. She really got to shine in the beginning of this movie, kick a lot of ass, and then just kind of folded into the crazy mess of the rest of the movie with with the Civil War and everybody fighting, and she does her part very well. The Falcon, Captain America's trusty sidekick. I, yeah, sidekick. He's a sidekick. I mean, come on. He's got cool tech, a lot of good lines, written very well. He's kind of Captain America's conscience. He's always there telling Captain America, I don't know about this, Cap, but he's always been completely loyal to Captain America. He's great in this movie. Hawkeye shows up again. He kind of shows up as the voice of reason. He's got a lot of good jokes in this movie, and it's always good to see Hawkeye with his jokes because he's supposed to be funny. He has a lot of cool little moments in this movie. He's not in the movie as much as I would like, but it's hard to include a ton of everyone when you've got so many characters going at it. Scarlet Witch and the Vision. Scarlet Witch and the Vision are characters that were introduced in the last Avengers movie, Age of Ultron and they have grown into their powers and they have a lot of good scenes together. Is it a budding romance? Is it a budding rivalry? I don't know, maybe. Whatever it is, I can't wait to see what happens further down the road with both the characters because they were also written very well. Paul Rudd is back as Ant-Man, uh, bringing in the majority of the comedy in the movie, and he's just great. I love Paul Rudd. I love his version of Ant-Man. He's got a couple surprises up his sleeve I didn't expect, and he fits into the fold so well. Like I said, this script, oh my god. The Winter Soldier. Bucky Barnes brought back in as the Winter Soldier, uh, trying to regain who he is and figure that out. and. Uh, building back his friendship with Captain America while also building his rivalry with Iron Man. He kicks so much ass. There are so many good fucking fight scenes with him in it. He throws down with pretty much everybody. Sometimes he gets his ass kicked, sometimes not. He's such a badass, I can't express that enough. This film also is introducing two new characters into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, one of them being the Black Panther. Personally, this character was my favorite character throughout the whole movie. He had a great character arc, and he had the biggest story to tell and most to go through as a character. His suit is fucking sweet. He kicks everyone's ass. You understand where he's coming from. You understand why he's doing this for his country, Wakanda. Wakanda. It'll be exciting to see how he handles the weight of being a king of a country and dealing with the politics of it, as well as being a hero on top of that. This movie was released to critics over a month ago. Ever since then, everyone's been ranting and raving about Spider-Man. Holy shit, was Spider-Man good in this movie? Oh my god. This is the best representation of Spider-Man we've ever seen. Sony has had the property rights to Spider-Man for the last fucking like 15 years, and they finally realized that they just don't know how to do it. They can't get it right. So they let Marvel borrow him for this movie, and I think they're going to continue letting him borrow him for the foreseeable future. I mean, Marvel now is creating a Spider-Man movie called Homecoming, yeah. but I'm excited for that. The scene Spider-Man's introduced in this movie is so fucking perfect. I smiled till my goddamn face hurt. It's so good to see someone playing Spider-Man that actually is a teenager and not 30-something years old like Andrew Garfield playing someone that's in high school. What the fuck? It's great to see this character represented as a teenager trying to deal with teenager problems as well as being a superhero and dealing with the weight of that. He's not in the movie as long as I would like, but every scene he's in, he steals the show. He steals that thunder right out of the sky. Wolverine! Never mind. That'd be great though. Please go see Captain America Civil War. It's so fucking good. It's probably the best superhero movie ever made. I'm gonna go see it another 11 or 12 times to make up my mind. It's good to see comic book fans that are given a script to create. It's good to see it work. Unlike Batman versus Superman, which did not work that well. Russo Brothers, you fucking nailed it. It's perfect. If you like this video, you want to see more in the future, give that subscribe button a jab and uh, more videos come in the future. I have an office now.
pretty sweet, right? Uh, I get to record videos whenever I want and I won't have the interference of neighbors listening to dubstep for 12 hours at a time. Ugh. Thanks for watching. See ya. Nice.